Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Amir Punja, and I'm pleased to be here today to be able to talk to you about these amazing, interesting, and fascinating trichomes that are produced on cannabis flowers. And what I'd like to do is show you some incredible images that, uh, if I can use the words uh, awesome and incredible and beautiful and so on, uh, I'd like to be able to share this information with you today. Uh, feel free to have your cell phones ready in case you want to take photographs of these amazing display of images that I'm going to be showing you. And so here's a developing cannabis plant. This is a plant that's being grown outdoors. And the focus of this presentation, of course, are the flowers. These are the flowers that are produced um, at the terminal ends of these, of these particular plants. And similarly, when plants are grown indoors, as you see here in this controlled environment with lighting, the um, cannabis flowers are produced in large numbers and uh, will be ready for harvest uh, in, in a very short period of time. And of course, it's these cannabis flowers that bear all of these trichomes that I'd like to spend um, the next uh, 28 minutes or so talking to you about. The work that I'll describe was conducted on plants that were grown in greenhouses and greenhouses such as this, where you see very controlled lighting, controlled nutrient regimes and uh, controlled growth overall. And these plants are basically going to be ready to be harvested in about seven weeks. And just to illustrate how the cannabis flower matures, starting from when the, the lights are, are switched off to give a 12 hour photo period, over the course of three to four to seven weeks, these particular flowers or inflorescences develop quite dramatically as you can see here on the bottom from about week three onwards, they increase tremendously um, in size. We refer to these as flowers. Uh, the correct terminology is, is inflorescence, which is also uh, used by some, uh, some individuals just as, as flower buds. But really what they are, are individual flowers that are clustered together on this main stem. And I'll show you image in the next few slides of these individual flowers. They're not true flowers in that they don't produce petals, but they have these bracts and they have the stigmas, which are part of the, the female flower. And so taking a closer look at the inflorescence or the, the flower head of a cannabis plant, you see the, these stigmas. These are the female uh, structures that are going to be collecting pollen uh, if there was going to be fertilization. And I'll show you a scanning electron micrograph of that. So this cannabis flower is pretty much a cluster of individual smaller flowers. So these stigmas then, as you see here, have these hair-like projections. And uh, if you were to place pollen grains, as we did in this experiment, you can see the pollen grains germinate and they will fertilize this particular stigmatic surface and form seeds, which is not something we want in cannabis, but we do in hemp. In cannabis, of course, we cultivate just the female flowers, so there wouldn't be any pollen germinating on these particular, um, on these particular stigmas. These are the plants that I showed you earlier in the greenhouse. This is week seven ready for harvest. You see the uh, stigmatic structures that are formed here on the, on the surface of the flower. And uh, at harvest or after harvest, these are uh, dried in this manner, hung upside down for a period of about five days, at which time then the flower buds will be removed and they'll be ready for uh, packaging and shipping off for uh, use for medicine or recreational or um, extraction. Sometimes the uh, flower buds are uh, removed uh, prior to drying and they're placed on these trays and, and put into a drying room where then they'll be um, dried for five days, at which time these are then ready for packaging up and shipping off to, to market. So this is what we refer to as the buds, which is the essentially broken down inflorescence that I showed you early on. Now, when the can cannabis flower uh, approaches maturity, those stigmas that I showed you earlier take on sort of an orangey brown color, which indicates they're ready for harvest. But more importantly than that, you notice these trichomes, these shiny uh, pinpoint like structures that are covering the surface of the inflorescence leaves and, and the bracts. This is the material then obviously that's going to be manufacturing and containing all of the cannabinoids, the THC, the CBD and the terpenes. And that's the focus of my study is to study the development of these various trichomes on the cannabis flower. So this is the cannabis bud in its, in its glory. Uh, this is obviously ready to be, to be used for, for um, recreational purposes. You see the dried up stigmas here, these orangey brown structures, 
And then of course are the, the trichomes, which you'll see close-ups of here uh, in, the, in, the next, in the next few minutes. So that was the focus of my work, is to study in detail what these trichomes look like. Here's a light uh, microscope image. You can see again, these, these spiny projections, these other trichomes, they're, they're produced on these stalks. You'll see close-up images of these stalks uh, when I go through my, my slides. And uh, most, most producers will have seen this uh, as they examine their, their plants over, over a period of time. So they're quite obvious. The, the trichomes are quite obvious. But what we wanted to do was to use the scanning electron microscope. This is a, a, a piece of equipment that actually ma magnifies these trichomes considerably. Uh, when you look at the images on the screen, they're probably magnified over 100,000 times. And this allows you to really study detailed structure of what these can, uh, can, cannabis trichomes look like. Now, the scanning microscope is used uh, as shown here. This is the, the large equipment, uh, various parts of it. Sample is inserted into this chamber. And the images that are uh, being produced can be captured here on these computer screens and then downloaded and saved and used in presentations like the one I'm going to um, show you today. So this is what a, a scanning electron microscope would look like. And within the machine itself is the sample. This is a tiny piece of BRAC tissue that has trichomes. Uh, we coat this with gold or palladium, very, very fine layer to allow these um, electrons that are produced to be uh, scattered and emit uh, images. So the electrons originate from an electron gun. And eventually what happens is the, the electrons that are released are detected in an electron detector or images are sent over to the screen where we can then visualize what's going on in this particular chamber. So I'll show you a couple of images done by other researchers where they looked at pollen grains. These are pollen grains of different plant species. You notice the very, very fine detail these spine-like structures, the size, the shape, all different in these various different plant species. But notice how clear and uh, three-dimensional these particular images are. And similarly, if we use uh, red blood cells, the red blood cells in your body and my body, uh, these are the platelets. You can see sort of a pancake-shaped structure. These are magnified many, many, many times to show you the actual um, appearance of red blood cells in the electron microscope. And so we wanted to use this technique to study not just trichome development, but to look at things like trichome density, maturation, and quality, and how potentially these various features could be used to assess things like THC and CBD that may be produced in this particular plant. So once again, this is the inflorescence, the entire structure. We're looking at very, very small pieces, as you see here, magnified over on the right, and these spiny spicules that you see here are the trichomes that we're now going to magnify in the scanning electron microscope. And here's the first image. This is the trichome, the glandular trichomes that are born on stalks, as you see here. This is the surface of the, the bract or the leaf tissue. This is a midvein. And you can see how these trichome glands or trichome heads appear under the scanning electron microscope. Now here's another image. It shows you a different type of trichome. These are the, the, the non-glandular trichomes, what we call the hairs. Um, in the background, these, these structures, these little smiley faces, these are the stomata. These are involved in photosynthesis. <clears throat> Excuse me, this is how the plant takes up carbon dioxide, releases oxygen in photosynthesis. These are other types of trichomes called uh, bulbous trichomes. The trichomes that I'm gonna focus on are here, these large glandular circular structures that we'll spend more time on. I'll show you a few close-up images of these, these hair-like structures, particularly on a leaf. This is a cannabis leaf that has many, many of these um, non-glandular spines or hairs. And you can see uh, they do have a protective function. They will protect against insects and various other, other forms. But notice too that the leaves do have these um, glo globular round structures, which are also the, the um, sessile um, trichomes that we'll, we'll speak to in a few minutes. A close-up, if you are an insect, this would be a pretty dangerous territory to enter into because of these, these various hairs that are meant to protect the plant from attack by, by various types of, of uh, organisms. And they're, it's quite effective. So back to the trichomes. These are the trichomes that, the glandular trichomes that we'll spend some time studying. These are the spiny projections that we just saw that are most likely serving a protective function. 
Now these trichomes, <clears throat> the heads of these trichomes, you can see here in this image that is of a um, dried cannabis flower or, or a bud. And you can see how nicely they're distributed over the surface of this particular sample. Uh, very uniform, very nice and circular. This is a good sample. This is a sample that has probably the optimal amount of THC and, and CBD and, and terpenes. Here's a close-up of these um, magnificent trichome heads. And you can see they're surrounded by a cuticle. These are individual, uh, individual trichome heads. And I'll show you a close-up of the, the um, trichome head sitting on the surface of a bract of leaf. And you can almost visualize these, these miniature hot air balloons, if you wish, that are starting to accumulate THC and CBD. And all of this manufacturing is occurring within the trichome um, head itself. The various enzymes are produced and are working here within, within this particular structure. It's quite a magnificent site. And the next image that I'll show you is even more magnificent because it shows you now this particular trichome, trichome head is raised on a stalk. And these stalks are very important in not only pushing the trichome head uh, above the surface of the leaf, but also it's associated with maturation and accumulation of various types of uh, cannabinoids. So those of you working in the medical field, those of you using cannabis for various purposes and using it to make food or produce various types of extracts, this is the image that I want you to visualize of this magnificent trichome head that's sitting on the surface of a stalk that's manufacturing all the materials that this particular conference is all about, the THC, the CBD, various cannabinoids, and uh, of course, terpenes. I like to make an analogy of that particular trichome um, head to a lamp, a lamp that's been powered by electricity. And the larger, of course, the size of the bulb that you place in here, the larger is going to be your amount of light that's emitted. The energy in a cannabis trichome comes from the bottom of the plant, the photosynthesis that's being pushed up. And then the size, of course, of the trichome head is going to illustrate how much light or how much THC you're actually going to be producing. So much so that an artist that I met a few years ago was able to draw out these particular trichome glands uh, on a stalk such as this and visualize the light source emitting from a trichome head. And this would be the, the cannabinoids, the THC and the CBD. It'd be a wonderful sight to see these on our, on our streets. So here it is again, uh, these magnificent structures on these stalks, these other trichome heads then that are going to be producing these various types of cannabinoids. These are the small uh, bulbous trichomes that I talked about that we don't really know what they're, they're doing. So we're gonna spend most of our time now focusing on these structures here. Back in 2005, there was evidence presented that the enzymes involved in the manufacture of THC and CBD and various other uh, terpenes are actually produced within that globular structure, which I'm referring to as the trichome, uh, trichome head. So it's really a, a miniature factory, if you wish, that's synthesizing these very, very important chemicals. So much so that you can visualize as this trichome is being developed, the energy that's coming from the epidermis and other cells in the plant is being used to drive the manufacture of these cannabinoids within this particular um, glandular structure that's shown here. And then, as I mentioned, there is a stalk that develops, and this is very much similar to a mushroom. You can almost visualize this mushroom gland starting to form, and the, the stalk cells are derived from the epidermis, the layers of the leaf, and so you can see it pushing itself up, and as it gets larger and more mature, these stalks continue to grow. They grow upward, as the flower matures. And over time, they get fairly large. As you see here, these are all the cells of the epidermis of the leaf cells that have been used to form the stalk. This is the large glandular head that's now accumulating various types of cannabinoids. It's quite, a, quite, an, impressive, it's quite an impressive structure. And here's a close-up. This is now the fully formed uh, trichome uh, head. That's con that contains all of the THC and cannabinoids and various other things that we want to use uh, for medicine and recreation. Here's the stalk, and you can see it's attached here to the trichome head. 
we looked at the development of these stalks and the size of the trichome heads over time. And as the flower matures, going from three weeks to six weeks, what you see, of course, is an increase in the, in the length of the stalk. And you also see an increase in the size of the head that's being formed on top of the stalks. So maturation is associated with an expansion of the stalk and an, and an expansion of the head. So sort of like that hot air balloon that I talked about. And so just to summarize then, these uh, trichomes that we talked about, they're called capitate trichomes. They're found on both sides of the bracts, the upper and the lower. They're circular in shape, surrounded by a cuticle. And as the flower matures, these stalks begin to elongate and the size of the head starts to increase. This is a slide that illustrates there's way more trichomes on the underside of the bract than there is on the top. I'm not sure what the significance of this is, but you can see clearly there's way more of these uh, trichome heads here than there are on the, on the surface of the, of, the, um, of the tissue. So we did some experiments where uh, we actually monitored and counted how many of these trichome glands are actually being produced. And these are two different strains. And everywhere where you see these dots, just signifies the, the location of these various trichomes. And you can see there's differences between strains in terms of how many trichomes are being produced. And this data is illustrated in, in a graph form here. Uh, this is the number of trichomes over time. As the flowers mature, the number of trichomes goes up, as you see, to a maximum at about seven weeks. And this just illustrates here the underside uh, the underside of a trichome uh, of a leaf has way more trichomes than the upper side, as you see here. So there is, there is a pretty significant difference on whether you're looking at the, the upper surface or the lower surface. Now there are some of these uh, trichome stalks that are absolutely crazy. Uh, here's one that is, that is humongously long. Uh, there's another one right there. I'm not really sure what the significance of this is, but you can see it's a, it's a huge trichome stock compared to some of the, the other ones in the background. And uh, whether there's a significance to this I, or not, I don't know. But, but the, the, the importance of the stock is that it's an indication of maturation of those particular um, trichomes. Uh, so much so that this important study that was published three years ago by Livingston and others demonstrated that as these stocks get longer, the amount of terpenes and the amount of cannabinoids uh, that, is, that are produced in the in the actual heads themselves is increased significantly. There's a significant increase in the manufacture of these terpenoids and cannabinoids as a result of elongation of the stalks. And the reason for that is that as the um, trichome stalks begin to grow, so do the number of secretory cells. The number of secretory cells that you see here at the bottom of these trichome heads, the numbers go up so that as the, the stalks begin to elongate and you have trichomes that are maturing, you have more of these secretory cells that are producing all these cannabinoids, which is shown here in this, in this light blue color. So this is the THC and the CBD produced within these glandular structures. And here are the stalks, the stalks that we looked at uh, a few minutes ago. So quite a fascinating um, developmental change over time. The other thing that happens as the trichome uh, heads mature is that you can see a difference in fluorescence uh, under UV light. So when you shine UV light here on the right, you can actually pick out where these glandular heads are as opposed to where you have normal uh, visible light. And the reason for that is that these trichome heads, of course, contain cannabinoids, which fluoresce at a wavelength of around 430 nanometers. And so you can actually pick out these individual uh, trichome heads as shown here. And this was also demonstrated in this uh, paper that I described by, by Livingston. So here's a close-up uh, of one of these trichome heads here, the secretory cells you can see on the outside, and they're pumping out uh, these cannabinoids that are accumulating in this hot air balloon as it starts to develop. And you can see here the stalk that the, um, the head is attached to. Now, this is the, the base of the uh, uh, or the top of the actual stalk, you can see here, this is where the, the trichome head was attached. And in the next image, I show you a cross section through this particular stalk that shows you it it's consists of these various cells. So these are the cells that make up the stalk. And this is, this is where the nutrients, the photosynthates are going to flow through the stalk up into the trichome head to provide energy for the manufacturing of these various cannabinoids. It's, it's quite an amazing process. 
And here's the other side. This is the underside of the actual head. And this is where the trichome stalk would attach uh, to the bottom of the, uh, of the trichome head. This was illustrated quite nicely in this paper that was published a few years ago. It indicates where the stalk is actually being attached to the underside of the trichome head. And you can see right here the point of connection uh, where the stalk ends and the, the head is starting to form. And we can show that in this schematic representation where you've got the trichome head with the cuticle. These are the secretory cells that we talked about. These numbers go up as the length of the trichome uh, stalk increases. And this balloon uh, structure starts to increase the uh, accumulation of various types of cannabinoids. So here's an uh, underside view of these secretory cells. You can see them right here. And they're all secreting various cannabinoids that are filling this particular uh, balloon or cavity over time. And here's a, uh, a dried uh, cannabis uh, trichome stalk, as you see here, with the actual um, trichome head still attached. And you can see, you can almost visualize the contents here, which is obviously all the, the cannabinoids and, um, and terpenes. Now these things do become detached. Uh, many of you know that you can collect these various uh, trichome heads and use it to make things like hashish and so on. Uh, you can see the point of attachment of the stalk. Uh, these things come off and here's another illustration where it's come off from the stalk. And now you've got your entire uh, trichome head that contains all of these cannabinoids uh, in it. Again, very similar to, to a hot air balloon that's, that's become detached. So just to summarize, the stalk development is an important part of maturation. Uh, when these stalks start to develop, you start to see tremendous increase in the accumulation of these various cannabinoids. Uh, what causes the stalks to elongate? We don't know. Why are some stalks longer than others? We don't know. And uh, why, are we, why do we have more? Um, trichomes on the underside of a bract as opposed to the upper surface, we're not sure. So there's still a lot of research that still has to be done to try to resolve these various aspects of um, trichome development. And of course, the heads do dehiss. The process of the, the um, glands coming off is called dehiscence. And of course, uh, if, you, if you harvest these things and cause damage, then these trichome heads can break off. Here's an example of a, of a good sample, a sample that's well-preserved. You can see all the trichome heads are still attached. This is a dried cannabis flower. And this is a flower where um, there's been some uh, abuse or not well taken care of. And you can see where all of the heads have broken off, leaving uh, much less THC and other cannabinoids in this particular sample. So have to be careful when we handle these cannabis flowers. Okay, so the last thing I'd like to talk about is the maturation. There is a phase where the trichomes literally undergo a maturation or senescence process. And this is accompanied by the accumulation of a brown color within the, the trichome um, heads themselves. And so we wanted to study this under the electron microscope. Here's the uh, mature trichome head. You can actually see little droplets of exudate starting to form. This is where now the resin is starting to become pushed out of the, um, the trichome head itself. And we can actually see that because what happens is that when the resin comes off, it causes the surface of the trichome uh, head to become sticky. And so these little heads start to stick to one another, as you see here. And those of you that have handled cannabis flowers that are developing, you know the sticky residue. That's what's being secreted out of those trichome heads. And here's a close-up. This bulging, this is the resin that's being actually pushed out through the, through the head, through the cuticle. And here you can see actually the exudate actually dribbling down, pouring down from the actual trichome um, head itself. It's, it's quite, quite an amazing uh, view when you look at it here under the scanning microscope. And what happens, of course, is because of the sticky nature of the surface, you have what I consider these hot cross buns, uh, these trichome heads sticking together as a result of the resin that's being produced. And here again, you get these large blobs. This is all because of resin that's come off. These trichome uh, heads have stuck to one another to form these blobs. And here's another indication of that 
These are large uh, structures that are caused by the exudation of that resin. And this happens at, at, at maturity. And again, just a low power shot to show you the, the sticking together of the trichome heads as a result of secretion of resin. The other thing that happens, of course, is there is this process of senescence, which I consider aging. This on the right is a trichome that's starting to age. On the left is a trichome that's still fairly, fairly young in the developmental process. And when you take a look at these aging trichomes, the, the actual um, heads themselves, you notice there's a wrinkling of the surface of the cuticle, almost like a, a sort of a prune uh, shaped image, as you see. This is a very, very high powered magnification picture. This is what happens over time. The resinous material starts to condense to form this cakey like substance. And then over time, it looks like this. This is a completely senescent or aging uh, trichome uh, head that has the resinous material just completely sort of collapsed and, and baked down on the surface of the trichome. And you can see this uh, close up. This entire wrinkling is all the resinous material. The cuticle is broken off. And this is an older aged uh, mature uh, trichome head that's shown. And when you take a low power image of this particular um, view, what you do see is uh, that these trichome heads that have senesced or old can be seen here as the shriveled up images. So again, just to summarize, droplets of resin, resin are, are released from these trichome heads, causes them to become sticky, uh, and it results in the formation of these various blobs. And the resin then uh, causes these particular trichome heads to collapse, which is basically the last phase, which is the, uh, the senescence. Here's an example of a good um, sample on the left where the trichome heads are all intact. On the right is a sample that isn't uh, processed very well. The trichome heads have broken off. There's very few of them left. Uh, the, the scanning microscope can actually show you differences in quality between uh, a good sample on the left and a poor sample on the right. The other thing that can be done, something we're looking at now uh, before I end is, is using computer assisted technology to determine uh, the numbers of trichomes on cannabis flowers and the various types of maturation uh, phases. So what we've done here is circled the various trichome heads, whether they're mature in the red, whether they're immature in the white, and then the mature ones in between, which are the blue. And so using these computer enhanced uh, systems, we can almost tell where these various trichome heads are and how many they are in a very, very short period of time. And that's something that we'd like to work on to demonstrate um, how computer assisted technology can be used to assess maturation of trichomes. So I'll end here with some images that are generated through this computer assistance method. Uh, these circles illustrate where the trichomes are located. You can see the differences between these two samples. Here's another image generated by the computer that shows you the various types of trichomes that are found. And then finally, this one that illustrates the senescence, mature trichome glands that are shown in brown uh, compared to the previous. So I, I think this, this image analysis using computer technology is going to be very important for us to decipher trichome numbers and maturation. So finally, uh, trichomes are fascinating structures. I hope I've shown you some amazing images to illustrate that. Lots of things we don't know, but what initiates uh, their development is their effect of light, other signals. Why do these trichome stalks develop to various extents? And can we use this kind of technology to assess um, trichome development and optimal time of harvest? That would be very, very important from a commercial perspective. Uh, various individuals have contributed to this research, various funding agencies, and uh, various people have helped me with collection of this, these various images. So I hope what I've done with this presentation is show you some of the spectacular uh, images of cannabis trichome development and the various things that go on that I think are going to be commercially extremely important. Um, I'm sorry I wasn't able to attend the, the meeting here. Um, I hope this, this presentation will give you um, some ideas for, for thought. If you have questions, please send them along. I'm going to be um, at my computer right now as we speak. You can send me emails at punja, P-U-N-J-A, at sfu.ca, and I'll be happy to take questions, answer these uh, either right away 
or any time when you've had time to digest this particular information. Thank you for your attention and I wish you all the best in the rest of the conferences. Thank you.